I'm Tom Fleischner. I'm the Executive Director of the Natural History Institute and welcome to another uh, one of our Notes from the Field video series. I'm standing here near the edge of Watson Lake, uh, which is near just outside the town of Prescott, Arizona, here in the middle of the Mogollon Highlands ecoregion. I've often defined natural history, one definition of natural history, as the practice of falling in love with the world. So this morning we're going to look a little bit, we're going to burrow into how and why do people love particular parts of the natural world. So I'm going to start with a happy confession. I love birds. My entire life I have been fascinated by birds ever since I was a little boy and uh, that has only grown over the years and they've been important companions for me on my life journey. And I know that I'm not alone in that. Human cultures, every time and place, people have always been fascinated by birds. And I think there's a number of reasons why. One, obviously, is the simple fact of birds' flight, which is an amazing, wonderful thing that, that sets them apart from, from so many other organisms, especially ourselves. And tied in with flight, one particular aspect of that that we've learned more and more about recently is is the migration of birds, which is a phenomenal uh, thing that we're, we're just starting to understand. But for example, birds like the Arctic tern will travel every year from the Arctic to the subantarctic and back, spanning the globe back and forth and back and forth every year of its life. A bird called the bar-tailed godwit will travel across the open Pacific Ocean from Alaska to New Zealand and back, 18,000 miles round trip. And there's so many examples. A little tiny rufous hummingbird that passes through this area in late summer weighs about a tenth of an ounce, and yet it can travel all the way from Alaska to Mexico in its migration. Um, so there's just phenomenal stories like that that also leads to our, our, our being captivated by birds. Um, simply, they're beautiful. The, all the colors in the world and the striking patterns and so on, we're drawn to that, um, whether we're scientists or artists or, or what have you. Um, but also, there's something about birds. They're really, in almost any place in the world, they are sort of the most conspicuous and common others, you might say, the other forms of life that we encounter all the time. And in fact, birds are, share the entire globe with us. There's, there's no place in the world that you can go that you are not likely to encounter birds, whether that's the hottest deserts in the world, the highest mountains, near the poles, out in the middle of the open ocean, you'll find birds. And so they are sort of our companions on this journey. And also, one really interesting thing is that birds, more than any other group of animals, they use the same primary senses that we do, which is vision and, and um, uh, sound. So they, they are what we sometimes call eye and ear behaviors. Their world is constructed of sounds and, and, and sights just like us. So um, I sometimes think of birds as being our sense mates. We share the same senses as them. And this allows us to have some understanding of the world of birds in a way that we simply can't, for example, with many of our fellow mammals. Because compared to all other mammals, we have a very inept sense of smell. Most mammals' world is constructed of smells that we simply, no matter what we do, we can't, um, we don't have the, the physiological apparatus to, to understand or to enter their world. And so we're always gonna be kept at a distance, even though we're more closely related to them. So, but birds, we have the same senses, we can, we can understand and, and enter their world. So, and yet they're so incredibly uh, different from us in terms of flight and so on. So, because birds are literally um, uh, flying dinosaurs. And so I think part of our love for and, and fascination with birds is both because we are so much like them in certain ways and also so incredibly starkly different from them in others. So much the same, but so different. So let's walk out to the lake and, and see what we see. As I mentioned, we're at along the shores of Watson Lake here near Prescott, Arizona. Uh, it's fed by Granite Creek, a perennial stream that flows in just beyond me here. And Watson Lake, as well as Willow Lake nearby, are both what are called IBAs. That stands for Important Bird Area, 
a conservation designation of the National Audubon Society. A lot of local people worked very hard to give some extra protection to this area for birds. So here, as virtually anywhere, you will find birds that are not, that the birds are not the same every day of the year. They change in many different ways. And there's lots of different ways um, that birds, different types of relationships birds have with this place or any place. Some are resident, they're here year round. Some are migratory, they're just passing through on their way from point A to point B. Some of them winter here so that we have uh, a whole different assemblage of birds here in the winter than in the summer. And then some are the breeding birds that actually are breeding around here. And, and it, we're uh, in early April here right now. So it's, we have a combination of all those things going on and it's changing almost daily, which is really exciting. So as I'm looking out here today, the most abundant bird I'm seeing is a really cool little duck called the ruddy duck. Um, there's probably about 300 ruddy ducks out on the lake here, maybe more. Uh, so I'm only looking at a small part of the lake. And uh, these are small ducks called, in a group called the stiff tail ducks. And mixed in with them are several other species. There's um, uh, buffleheads, there's northern shovelers, there's uh, at least one Canada goose, which you can hear. You might be familiar with that from, uh, they're all over North America, oftentimes around people. There's um, also American coots. There's one pie-billed grebe, sort of unusual uh, water birds, which are actually not related to ducks. So, but what's really kind of cool in a place like this is that it's changing all the time. And especially at this time of year in the spring, it's really shifting pretty dramatically. So for example, um, much of this winter, there was a couple birds that were somewhat unusual that were here for this winter, white pelicans big spectacular birds which are now gone which breed in interior lakes far to the north places like Yellowstone and so on and we also had some swans from far far in the north that were here this winter those are gone but now we have uh, other things moving through and it's just very dynamic because it's going to be changing all the time these ruddy ducks are will probably within days be mostly gone moving up into the far north they breed in interior lakes and potholes in the uh, interior west far to the north of here so different on any given day different things will pop out at you and grab your attention and um, today kind of the name of the game at least for me is ruddy ducks oh cool just saw a hairy woodpecker flying through the trees here so we're now in the back into the gallery forest here of the riparian zone and obviously this is an extremely different habitat for birds than out at the shore of the lake right behind us where we just were. Uh, you could say that it's a much more three-dimensional world and so the birds have choices of all these different levels in the forest. We can hear, because of that, a lot of the what we experience here with birds is sound more so than out on the lake and sometimes we only hear them and see them. So there's been a whole lot of house finches singing their beautiful song here and house finch is a really fascinating bird because they can be in some remote deserts where you don't see very many other birds but also as the name suggests very near humans speaking of the world of sound you may notice behind me here the sound of, of highway of traffic and indeed there's a high-speed highway just on the other side here you know, of the of the riparian zone and um, while it might be nice to be out here on some mornings and not hearing the sound of vehicles, it's also kind of a reassuring um, reminder, I think, of the resilience of birds and of, of life in general. Because we give the, give the birds half a chance with a habitat like this, and they're going to fill it and thrive here. And in fact, uh, this is a really, as I said before, important bird area. And so, um, and that this the setting aside of this I mentioned was a, uh, the work of a lot of uh, uh, dedicated volunteer local conservation people, and many of those people were not professionals. They were what we call amateurs. An amateur, if you think about that word, literally means one who loves. Uh, tying back into that idea, I started with that natural history is the practice of falling in love with the world and amateurs exemplify that. We know so much about birds because of what I've said before about how they're 
almost everywhere we are and because of the mass mobilization of those who love, the amateurs who help uh, pay attention to what's going on in the world around them. So we encourage you to, to pay attention to the birds, whether it's at your backyard feeder or in a local area like this or in the middle of the Arctic Wildlife Refuge or some wilder place. Well, thanks for watching this time uh, for another episode of Notes from the Field. Um, you can find a whole archive of wonderful Notes from the Field uh, videos as well as videos of our uh, other public programs on the Natural History Institute YouTube channel. We invite you to subscribe to that so you learn about new ones. Also, if you like and appreciate what we're doing, um, we, we would love to have your support if you go to our website, naturalhistoryinstitute.org. Uh, there's a tab at the top that says donate and we welcome uh, your support like all nonprofits we depend on the public to support our good work so thank you so much and I encourage you to get out there and start checking out the birds in your backyard and beyond thank you mm -hmm.